Welcome to the Day in History for June 1st. Today's Day in History is the day that a homing pigeon started a 55-day trip 11,000 kilometers from Nambia to London. Now, that doesn't seem like a pretty big deal, but if you were a bird, it would be. Now, the big idea for today is that there are still discoveries to be made because even though we know so much about carrier pigeons and other animals, we don't really know 100% how they can actually find their way home. And this just and this is not just pigeons. We're talking about fish that go all the way back up streams to the same spawning ground, sharks and other animals that uh, migrate. We don't know 100% how they do it. There's different theories and we think we have a good idea, but it could be you that discovers the secret. So I'll let you guys write this down. And let's go. Okay, so if you can see, we have two maps today. The pigeon started down here, okay, in lower southern Africa, and 11,000 kilometers later, it ended up in London. Pretty crazy, right? Now, let's talk a little bit about pigeons. Um, well, they're considered one of the first domesticated birds, and we'll talk more about that in a second. Um, let's see what else. They can go between 50 and 60 miles an hour, and some like racing pigeons can go all the way up to 100 miles an hour. They are an extremely fast bird. There's actually a hobby where people race pigeons. There's also a hobby where people breed pigeons to get like certain, um, certain types. Um, let's see, they can go thousands of miles to find their way back to their nest. And this is what made them so useful throughout history. Now, I knew, know that I said I was going to do like, you know, kind of silly days in history for the rest of the year. But this one's actually quite important because, well, before this, you didn't really have any way to get a message to people quickly unless you rode a really fast horse. But people figured out you could put a message on a pigeon. Pretty cool. Now, some of the earliest references to pigeons go all the way back to ancient Egypt. We're talking 3,000 years uh, BCE. Um, there are some pictures of a, a pigeon breed, and they actually believe that the pigeons um, were first domesticated even like 1,000, 1,500 years before this, so about 4,500 BCE. Pretty cool stuff. Now, the Romans have some reference to carrier pigeons, and we've talked about the Romans and how they expanded across Europe. They built road systems. Well, they also needed to uh, send messages to each other. And there's evidence that the Romans used these carrier pigeons to transfer messages back and forth. Pretty cool. Now, uh, the Middle Ages uh, also and throughout the world, we used these pigeons to send messages. Because before, we had to send a runner, right? We had to send a physical person with a message to go. Now, carrier pigeons um, were used um, to transfer these messages much quicker. However, you had to make the message really small, um, but it worked really well. Now, World War I has some of the most um, written about histories of carrier pigeons. Now, even though in World War I we had the telegraph, um, there were times when soldiers would move forward um, where they didn't have telegraph lines set up, and they would use these pigeons, like hundreds of thousands of them, throughout the war to send little messages. And they worked so well that um, soldiers were actually um, ordered to try and shoot these birds out of the sky as they flew because they knew that they were probably carrying messages. There's also evidence, or um, uh, some records of the Germans having people that were called hawkers or people that had uh, uh, trained hawks and they would release the hawks to go and try and attack the pigeons so the messages could be intercepted or stopped. Pretty interesting. Um, there's actually a really uh, a cool story about a pigeon that carried a message that ha uh, helped uh, save a couple hundred troops. Um, I didn't read too much about that, but that'd make a good uh, research topic. So World War I and even in World War II, these pigeons were very, very um, effective. They said that over 90 95% of pigeons would find their way back to their nest and deliver the message. Now, they would attach the message in these little capsules, and then they'd wrap them around 
their leg and they could get short messages to where they needed to be. I find it fascinating that in a modern age of technology in World War I and World War II, where we had all kinds of advancements, we were still using the same technology that the ancient Egyptians used thousands of years before to send messages. Pretty cool. So how do they do it? How do these birds find their way home? Well, there's a few different theories, and these theories can be um, overlaid on top of the other animals that we haven't quite figured out how they navigate. Now, one theory is that the birds use landmarks. They um, somehow have a memory of mountains and hills and how the, the, the shape of the land looks, and they use this to find their way back home. Maybe. Uh, there's another theory that they use the stars and the sun, the positions of where they are, and they use that to navigate. <coughs> um, and there's even a really complicated theory that has to do with quantum mechanics and different overlays of neutrons and electrons, and I, I couldn't really figure out how this one worked. This is a fairly new one. I'm not sure about this one. Um, but one of the main theories that we think it is is called magno magnetoreception. And this has to do with the bird. Well, if you look at this picture here, so if you imagine a bird's flying, they're actually gonna see the magnetic field of the earth. And so they remember where their home is and what the magnetic field looks like. And they use uh, some receptors in their brain, which I'll show you in a sec, or in their eye or on their beak, they haven't quite figured this out yet, to help them navigate where they're going. Now, the Earth has a magnetic field, and we've talked about this many times um, throughout our days in history, usually about space though, right? Now, the magnetic field of the Earth um, can be uh, read if you have the right equipment. And what scientists think is that inside the eyeball of the bird or of the pigeon are little receptors, these little pegs, that can actually pick up faint magnetic signatures of where they are. Now, depending on where you are on Earth, the magnetic field is going to look different. And so, like I said, the scientists think that the birds and other animals have figured out how to use these magnetic fields to navigate back to their home. Now, there's still a lot of research to be done, and we're probably getting close, but I find it fascinating that humans figured out how to take these birds and their home and use them as a tool to send messages. Pretty cool stuff. I would highly suggest to do a little extra research on this. There's some cool videos um, about carrier pigeons, and I think it's interesting. Thanks, guys. See ya.